Formula 1 is set for massive changes in the calendar. And it seems like the fans are not going to accept this easily because it's going to happen on the continent that hosts the most races in a year, Europe. The talk is about a potential change between races biannually, which doesn't bode well for the fans as this is the first step towards certain circuits being deleted from the calendar given the fact that the interest from the investors and the sports to go to street circuits have been increasing a lot. With this in mind, is the sport shooting itself in the leg for a short-term gain? And if so, can they do something to prevent a potential exodus of European fans? It goes without saying that Formula 1 has always been about racing on traditional circuits and races that are suiting the machinery that cost tens of millions of dollars to be built. However, times have changed and with the increased popularity of the sport in the USA as well as in the Middle East, we've seen some huge changes recently. While many believe it would stop there, F1's ever-growing nature is now in full swing, and the latest news that comes from Stefano Domenicali is rather disturbing for the hardcore F1 fans. There could be a scenario in which we're going to see races in Europe switch places biannually. This means that we might go racing in Zandvoort in one year and then in Spa or Barcelona the next one, which doesn't bode well for the popularity of the sport. This is something that needs to be understood well because the consequences might be huge. We're talking about a continent that has always been the primary contributor to the sport, and if we're to count the Azerbaijan GP, there are a total of 10 races in Europe as of now. Only one country has two Grand Prix events, Italy, and while there is a small chance that Spain will join them, now that a GP in Madrid has been confirmed from 2026 onwards, this is highly unlikely to happen and actually promotes the idea of Dominicali even further. When talking about these rotations, the president of the sport said, We have some news to share very, very soon with regard to the possibility in the midterm to have some rotational European Grand Prix and some other new options coming later. This is something that, of course, will clarify in the due course. It's true that we have a large demand of new possible venues that we want to come in, and our choice will always be balanced between the right economic benefits that we can have as a system, and also to leverage the growth on the market that we can see potential that will be beneficial for us to grow our business even further. But nevertheless, it goes to show the harsh reality about the sport. When there is money, there's nothing much you can do but follow the interest of it. And right now, the interest of the majority of the investors is to go and race on unusual locations for F1 machines, with the primary focus being on the street circuit. But when it comes to adding an 11th team and a potential engine manufacturer with Andretti and Cadillac, they draw the red line. These things are hard to comprehend, and what the sport is doing with these actions is just undermining the credibility and reputation that it has among the business investors and the partners that they aim to acquire now and in the future. But if the wishes are now crystal clear, the investors want to race on street circuits, and while the drivers have expressed their worries about F1 machines not being fit for such circumstances, that doesn't really mean it's going to be respected by the sport in general. When money talks, we ought to listen, and in this scenario, it definitely doesn't talk well, not just for the drivers and the fans, but for the popularity of the sport as well. Be that as it may, there are agreements in place that cannot be neglected just like that. And the first one is that according to the Concord Agreement, which is in place until the end of 2025, we cannot go racing on more than 25 circuits. As Dominicali stated, everyone is happy to race with the current calendar, but changes are very likely to be on their way sooner rather than later. Adding to the situation, the president of the sport said, We believe that the balance we have in terms of numbers is the right one, so 24 is the balance number that we feel is right. I do believe that all the propositions that are coming on our table is just giving the possibility to make even better choices for our future. So, as always, we need to be balanced, knowing that we cannot follow only the pure direct financial proposition, because that's different from region to region, but it's up to us to propose to our stakeholders the right choice. I think we're in a good momentum to make sure that the strategy for the future is even stronger, and that's why we're so confident about the fact that this will help us to enhance our platform on the sport from a social and business perspective. So, to add more towards Dominicali's approach, if we are to change races in Europe, we must look at which races are at huge risk, and right now the organisers that haven't extended their contracts beyond 2025 are Monaco, Monza, Zandvoort and Spa. Of course, Formula 1 cannot just neglect contracts like they don't exist, 
which means that tracks like Silverstone, Hungaring and the Red Bull Ring in Austria will be safe from these changes. But the fact that the Madrid GP is set to take place from 2026 onwards is putting a lot of pressure on Barcelona, a circuit that has a contract expiring at the end of 2026. The primary proposal that is likely going to be given is that we're going to see a rotation between Barcelona and the circuit that's viewed as the weakest link in Europe, Zandvoort. There are tons of experts who believe that had it not been for Verstappen, the popularity of this event would be diminished. And with the latest talks about how the three, soon to be four-time world champion, might retire earlier than anticipated, there could be a great change in scenery, even though the organisers of the race are adamant that they're in a stable place. Barcelona and Madrid being held in the same year is more or less impossible because the Spanish government has been adamant that they do not have the budget to host two races in the same year. And with the latest talks that the highly anticipated Madrid GP is struggling to understand whether it will be profitable, it just goes to show that one of these two races is very unlikely to be gone. Yes, the City Council of Madrid has confirmed that the profit issue won't be something that the potential investors would have to worry about. But the fact that the racing itself will happen through buildings and narrow streets that are disturbing the vision of the drivers just goes to show that there is a lot to be thought about when it comes to the future of the sport. What is further hitting the hopes of European tracks keeping their place in position is the ongoing processes in the background, such as the one in Saudi Arabia. There is a circuit that's been constructed in Kadir, and we all know how Formula 1 has been pushing towards returning back to Africa, but this time on a new street circuit in Rwanda. There are also talks about Osaka holding a street circuit while scrapping away Suzuka from the calendar. And while this is not happening on European ground, it just goes to boast the narrative of having street circuits being present more and more while the traditional ones are going to be scraped from the calendar. While talks about having more tracks in Asia and visiting places like Thailand or returning to Malaysia have stagnated, there is no doubt that the interest to grow beyond where we're right now with Formula 1 stands and this is something that's viewed as a massive challenge for the sport. It would be interesting to see whether the GPDA will do something about it, because they've been quite vocal when it comes to the actions of the president of the FIA, Ben Sulaim. And we all know that they've been pretty much against the expanding calendar of Formula 1 because it's just too many races in too little time. This has forced drivers like Verstappen and Alonso to hint that they might retire earlier than they would normally expect them to, even though Alonso is well in his 40s. And if he decides to retire tomorrow, nobody could say a thing about it. It's interesting to see how the sport will react to the entire situation with the changing circuits in Europe. Because even though F1 has reached heights it could have only dreamt of back in 2017, before the acquisition from Liberty Media, the levels have changed massively since then. And we're now dealing with a situation in which the sport would have to choose between morale and money. I do believe that we already know the answer to this question, but whether or not that would affect the popularity of the sport, it's up to us to wait and see. As of now, the feelings from the fans are negative, and we do believe that the drivers will have a negative say on it as well. So, with this in mind, what do you think about the rotating calendar in Europe? And, more importantly, do you think that F1 is walking on a thin rope with these potential changes? Let us know in the comments down below.